Well, good evening and welcome to our celebration of Jesus' birth once again. I'm Jim Kent, the pastor here at First Lutheran, and I have some great news for you. Unto you is born a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. The shepherds were returning to the fields after greeting Mary and Joseph with the good words that the angel had said to them. And Mary treasured up all these things pondering them in her heart. It had been a crazy year for Mary, if you think about it. She'd been engaged to Joseph. And then the angel Gabriel comes to her with his crazy, fantastic, but disturbing news that she would have a child. And then the government issued a census requiring that Mary and Joseph make a hundred-mile trip on foot to the town of Bethlehem when Mary was nine months pregnant. And there, Mary gave birth to her firstborn, a son. And as she was trying to recover from giving birth, suddenly out of nowhere, strangers show up, these shepherds, and they begin worshiping this baby and telling her all that the angel had said, encouraging her and Joseph along the way. It was an awful lot for a young girl to absorb. So I would imagine trying to relax, trying to, to figure out what went on. Mary treasured up all these things. She pondered them in her hearts. Mary carefully considered all that had happened to her, all that she had experienced in this crazy year that she had just lived. And as she did that, she also tried to sort through all that was going on around her. And tonight, 
tonight at the end of our crazy year of 2020. We are going to hear words that are quite familiar to all of us. Words that we've seen on greeting cards many times. Words that we hear sung to us in songs and hymns. Words that we've had read to us or that we've read to ourselves. These words can be very familiar to us. In fact, we could even begin taking them for granted. But these are more than just random words written on a page of a book. These are more than just a cute little story that we tell at Christmas time. These are the words of God, the words of God written for us. And so this evening, as we hear these words, ponder the question, what happened in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago? What happened in that year? Tonight, as we hear this word sung in the music, prayed in the prayers, and read to us through the scriptures, I urge you to join with Mary, the mother of God. Treasure these words. Ponder them in your heart. And then I pray that God would reveal to you this thing that happened in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago and change the world forever. And I pray that he would reveal to you how it has changed you forever. And so, as we come together in this house, let us treasure and ponder his words as we rise and begin our worship, remembering that we are baptized children of God, baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The people who have walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the deep darkness, on them has the light shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder for the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramping warrior in battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government, and of peace there will be no end, on the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness, from this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Merciful Father, we admit and confess that we have sinned against you in thought. We have done evil, you forbid, and have not done the good you desire. We sincerely repent of our sins and beg your mercy for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to grant us forgiveness. Give us the will, desire, to amend our sinful lives by the power of your Holy Spirit that we may come to delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, who gave himself to us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession, who are zealous for good works. Therefore, on account of Jesus Christ, and upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God, you give us reason to rejoice by your making the light to shine in the darkness. Grant that we joyfully receive the one who is the light of the world on Christmas, that with sure confidence we see him when he returns as our Lord. We ask all this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, as one God, now and forever. Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Lighting of the Christ child candle. We are reminded that the Savior has come and continues to reveal himself to a world living in darkness. God has given us a very important task to keep his light shining beyond the Christmas season. He revealed the birth of his son to shepherds and wise men. We too should be, sh should be wise in sharing the good news with others.
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, behold your God. Arise, O Christian people, prepare yourselves today. Prepare to meet the Savior who takes your sins away. To us, us, by by grace grace alone, the truth truth and light light were were given. given. The The promised Lord Lord from from heaven heaven to all the world is shown. shown. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus, and all the world would be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was the governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone all around them. And they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. And when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, They made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Having heard God's word, let us now confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, and from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. So, 
As we began the service, I urge you to treasure up and ponder all that you are hearing. And so as you treasured up and pondered God's word this evening, spoken to us through the songs, through the prayers, and through the readings, you heard God speaking directly to you. And as God spoke to the shepherds through the angels, and then to Mary and Joseph through those shepherds, he now speaks his holy and precious word to you. Whenever we hear his word sung or read or prayed or thought up in our mind, God is speaking to you and to me. He's calling us to join with Mary, to treasure up and ponder his precious gift to each one of us. Why does God want us to do that? God gives us his word to bring us back to him. God our Father, our creator, wants us back in his eternal presence. Recall that in the beginning, God desired all things that he created to be with him for all eternity. Recall how God created, with words. Each time God spoke, a new thing appeared, and then God blessed it, saying, it is good. And as we hear these words tonight, treasure that concept, ponder it. Because we are, in God's eyes, created by Him. We are good. But sin entered the world. Not through God, but through mankind, who desired to be like God. No longer because of sin, no longer was it possible for God and His creation to exist together. Dark and light, sin and perfection, they cannot coexist. But God, our Father, our Creator, didn't want it to stay like this forever. Treasure this. Ponder it. What does this mean but that, but that sin which separates us from God, yet our Father in Heaven still wants to be with us. He still wants us back. He wants to dwell with us forever as he originally intended at the beginning. Treasure up and ponder these words from Isaiah the prophet spoken 700 years before Jesus was born. For to us a child is born. To us, a son is given, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Ponder what that means for us today. As we wallow in the muck and the mire of disease and illness, of poverty and persecution, of violence and conflict that just seems to be running rampant all around us. But as we consider carefully these words from God, Hear what they say to us who are gathered here today, tonight and every night. A son born for us, a prince of peace for us, one who will reign forever for us. And God promises he will do this. He will make peace between us and him, 
a peace that enables us to live with him forever and ever. Did you hear what God said to you tonight through his angel? Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. That is exactly what the shepherds found. A baby lying in a manger. Quite the unlikely place to find the Prince of Peace, don't you think? Treasure up this good news of great joy given to us tonight. Our Savior is born. And if that's not enough, my brothers and sisters, the greatest treasure of us all to store up, the greatest treasure that could possibly be found was in our confession of sins and the assurance of God's forgiveness that he gave us earlier this evening. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all people. Think deeply on that for a moment and cling to those words. By the grace of God, through Jesus Christ, that baby born 2,000 years ago, God's word made flesh tells you that we of all people are saved. God reminds us that his son's birth wasn't the end of his love for us, though. There is much more, much, much more. For unto you is born in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And St. Paul tells us through his book of Titus, our blessed hope, this Jesus was born to be our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who gave himself to us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. Jesus was born 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem to die, to die for us on a cross, to redeem us so that we can live in peace with him for all eternity. And Jesus will come back again. And when he does, he promises to bring all who believe in him back into his Father's perfect new creation. And so as we ponder God's word at the end of this craziest of years, we see one thing that his word means for each one of us tonight. For each of us who believe in him. We have already received the greatest gifts we could ever hope for. We have received forgiveness for our sins. And we have already received the promise of eternal life. Unfortunately, there are many in the world today who don't believe. But the same grace that God has shown to each one of us that saves us is still at work in their lives. God has given each of us the gift, the good news of great joy, so that through each one of us, through our selfless acts and words of love, he can give the same gift of good news to all mankind everywhere. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, 
having treasured up, having pondered in our hearts all these things that we have heard tonight. Let's all go out into the world tonight. Let us be like those shepherds who returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. Let us all give the best Christmas gift that we could ever give, the love of Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, working in the world around us, all would be able to join us and receive the gift of Jesus as their Lord and Savior too. Now may the peace of Christ be with us all. Merry Christmas. Amen. Please rise for prayer.
Dear people of God, once again we have heard the message of the angels, visited Bethlehem with shepherds, and beheld the Son of God in human flesh, born of the Virgin Mary and lying in a manger. Now let us respond with praise and prayer, rejoicing to offer him our petitions and supplications on behalf of ourselves and everyone according to their need, confident that he will answer with all that is good, right, and best for us all. Merciful Father, we have lived through a time of great uncertainty and fear, and now come again into your presence on this most holy of nights. Deliver us from all epidemics, from the perils of war and violence, and from the loss of job and home. Open our hearts to receive with faith the joy of our Savior's coming, and to trust in his salvation forevermore. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed Lord, Give to those most in need the courage and patience to await your deliverance. And give to us kind and generous hearts that we share your gifts with those around us and multiply the blessings of your rich and daily provision. Lord, in your mercy. O oh, gracious God, deliver your people from all their afflictions of body and soul. Give aid and comfort to the hospitalized, be present with the aged and infirmed, and give to the dying and grieving your peace and those we now name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. O wise and faithful Father, deliver your church from her enemies and provide her with faithful pastors to serve the means of grace to us in your name. Give your guidance to those who lead us in your synod, district, and circuit and bless especially our pastors, church workers, missionaries, and those preparing for full-time service. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Mighty Lord, you have power over all things. Aid our government and elected leaders with your word and spirit, that they be guided by your commands to pursue justice and work for the common good. Teach them and us the value of life and to work for the protection of the unborn, the care of the widow and orphan, and the support of the aged. Lord, in your mercy. O oh, loving God, we give you thanks that Mary heard your word and pondered it in her heart, and that Joseph served your son so faithfully. Bless husbands, wives, parents, children, and all families. Help us to ponder your word in our hearts and to live it out that our homes be places of blessing and peace. Accept our songs of praise and the tithes and offerings we bring in response to your mercy and as signs of our gratitude and faith. Lord, in your mercy, we ask all these things through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. We have been worshiping God through our prayers, through our attention to his word, and through our music. And we also worship God through our tithes and offerings, giving back a portion of that which he has given to us. If you happen to bring an offering to worship this evening, there are uh, offering plates uh, located throughout the sanctuary, and uh, you can leave them there. Or you can also uh, offer online or mail uh, your offering into the sanctuary. In all these ways, we give thanks to you for your generous support as God continues his mission, even in this time. Let us now give thanks to God for all that he has given to us. Please rise. We give thee but thine own. Whatever that gift may be, all that we have is our own. Please be seated. Oh, 
Please rise. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And after he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this as often as you eat in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This is the cup of the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. Taught by our Lord, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Please be seated now and await uh, usher direction as we continue distribution.
Please rise. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, you are the light of the world in whom there is no darkness at all. Shine with brightness of your light in our hearts that we might believe that many in the world may be called from darkness into your marvelous light. We ask all this through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit as one God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, uh, please find your candles and uh, we will twist the tops to light them. As the light of these candles illumines our faces, it symbolizes the light of Christ, a child in the manger at Bethlehem, a savior suffering our death on the cross and soon to come from his throne on high as judge of all. He is our light here on earth and the eternal light in, uh, who lights, enlightens heaven where there is no need of candle or sun. Rejoice in the light of the world to come who transforms us in the brightness of his glory. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. In the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin.
as you depart the sanctuary, there's a black box uh, right by the exit doors. You can drop your candles in that on your way out this evening. We go out into the world with the blessing of God. May the almighty and merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Christ of Christmas dwell in you richly as we go forth and joyfully proclaim God's word and enthusiastically share Christ's love. Amen. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs>